What's up everybody? My name is Dustin and welcome to the channel. We like to talk about boats around here. Boats, fans, trolling motors. What? Wait a minute, we really don't like to talk about trolling motors, but we do, right? Um, yeah, generators, wiring, buoyancy, um, displacement, trailers, as well as some hunting stuff. Walk-in cooler, some, you know, randomness. Y'all know I like to shoot a bow, but today we are shooting our shot on a homemade electric choke for this V10, uh, V-twin 23 horsepower Briggs and Stratton that is on this fan on the boat behind me. So, first up, just to explain what's going on back here behind me, um, this is a, a pusher fan. Okay, and that pusher fan rotates all over the place, um, but the remote for it is up here on the front deck. So the person on the front deck needs to be able to start and kill the engine, but he also needs to be able to choke it when it's cold. Um, generally not when it's warm, but you still need the opportunity to be able to choke it when it's cold from the operator's position. So. Instead of running um, like our Teleflex 3300 cable that goes around there and comes out for our throttle, we could do the same thing um, for a choke. Uh, it'd be pretty expensive, like a hundred bucks probably, just to move a cable like this far for just a second. Um, and that would kind of also bind up our articulation. Everything that you've got hanging down off these is negative, all right? You want that to be able to move and pivot as free as possible. So, with that in mind, let's look and see what I got on the table over here. I want to be able to create something on my own that I can reproduce. Or that you can reproduce with, you know, maybe some links that I'll post in the description. So this, my friends, is a door lock, okay, out of any car out of any vehicle. All it is, it has a one inch throw, okay, back and forth. There's no springs in it, which means once you let off of it, it will stay in position until you reverse the polarity on these two wires and then it will go the opposite direction. Perfect for what we're wanting to do. You don't have to hold the button down. You can hit the button, turn the key. Whenever it starts, hit the button the other way, okay, to pull it back, turns the choke off, should be awesome. Now, these are cheap. You can get a pair of them on eBay for under $10. We're only gonna use one. That'll give us a backup. But we can't just wire them directly in. We need to use relays. We'll actually take a fair amount of power to move that magnet, all right? So we want to be able to get our power off the side of the engine, off of the starter, but give that power to it for, uh, through a, a relay. And we need a relay out and another relay to pull that magnet back. So with, uh, with two different relays mounted on the engine beside our little door lock there, I think we've got something that we can not only you know, get to work, it'll be reliable, it'll last for a long time, and if it doesn't, we'll still have a, a manual lever on the side, but we can reproduce this as well as in the future, if we ever wanted to do a remote, we can do a remote push button choke and a push button start. There are kits out there for that. You just have to have something like this to upgrade that. So. That will be down the road a little bit, but let's get this started here on the table. Let's get it together, talk about how we're wiring and how it works, and then we'll see about mounting it on our engine. Right now we are just in test mode, otherwise we would be mounting this momentary switch. Now for those who don't know, a momentary switch is off and in the center all the time. 
the power wire or the fused wire will be in the center and then when you tip it one way it will actually make connection over here and you tip it the other way and it will actually make connection over here. Um, this is very common in say like your hydraulic lift on your outboard or your hydraulic trim be the same way and chances are if you've got like a, a CMC um, hydraulic trim then you can look underneath your um, back of your boat and you'll see that there are two relays and it's wired exactly the same as what we're doing here. So the confusing part to me was to wire this one up normal and then wire this one up in reverse polarity. Um, on our directions here it said you know one's positive and one's negative and one goes to the switch and one goes to the accessory. Well that's all fine and dandy but when you do reverse polarity once again, we need to refer to the, uh, the diagram that I'm showing in the video right now. And guys, go ahead and stop and, and uh, get yourself a good screenshot of this, okay? Um, so to hook up the, our actuator here, I'm actually using a bullet connector, all right? Um, for a couple reasons. If something were to ever go wrong in the system um, and you know, it won't go out or it won't retract or a relay goes down. You need to be able to shut the system down completely and quickly. So you can come back here and remove just one and it will uh, eliminate the entire system. So how we've got it set right now, um, once again, I said you, um, the, the typical one was white and then to reverse it, you go black, all right? These will be the two wires that will actually connect on our momentary switch, just like that. But for all demonstrational purposes, right now I have a hot lead and I will touch it there. You can see the actuator actually goes out and it stops on its own. And then to retract that, we will touch the wire there. That's all there is to it. So now that I know that I will take these four wires and run them to a ground, and then the two red wires will both go to the positive lead, that means that these two wires are the only ones that actually need to run the full 18 foot length of the boat. And then we need to find a way to mount this in the front of the motor and attach it to the butterfly on the carburetor. So guys, on our motor here, um, you see we've got our throttle cable set up here on the back, but right here is our choke. And if you look right down inside there, you can see that butterfly that gets moved that opens up the choke okay that's actually open right there but on our lever system okay so we've got a tab right here on our lever and it just so happens to be perfectly in line with the tab right here that comes off i don't know if this is a a secondary throttle mount or what but it is perfectly in line with that tab right there that goes in and out. So I'm gonna mount our actuator right here. Just weld a little tab to that and drill some holes and mount our little actuator right there. That won't alter anything else on the entire motor and uh, it should work out great as long as we can get the articulation that we're looking for. I think that's a great place to start. Let's go ahead and turn our choke on. Yeah, buddy. Turn our choke off. There you go. Go ahead and zoom back out here a little bit. Okay. Um, now we're not getting 100% of the throw that we would have manually. Um, and you can still work this lever manually. Okay. Um, but we were opening the butterflies. When the choke is off, the butterflies are open, right? Um, and when the choke is on, it closes the butterfly so we're getting full closure that way we get full choke but when we turn the choke off our butterflies are about like this they're not completely flat they're about like that so i don't think that's going to restrict any airflow i think we're going to be good we'll uh, we'll hit her one more time here i think that's going to work out awesome now that we got everything out here in the sun, I realize it's kind of windy today, guys, but uh, I think you can deal. Um, you see, we just mounted our 
relays right here on top, there was a bolt that um, that also gave us a good ground for our relays and, you know, mounted right here on top. Um, keeps all the wires away from not only heat, but uh, moving parts as well. You know, you got flywheel here and, and heat and, and a belt driven fan back there. So um, it's stiff enough and, and not enough slack in there to hurt nothing. I obviously could have placed the wires over here. Um, that's just not how I did it. We uh, we ran our two wires and then this is the uh, the hot wire that goes to our relays. Okay, run in and, and then put up here on the front side of the intake where there's the least amount of heat. Um, and should be golden. These uh, these two red and blue wires here. Actually, we were able to run that all the way through our conduit, all the way down, down along our rail, up underneath, and uh, up to our ignition box. So, and then the ignition box there, just the momentary switch, up is choke, down is off choke, and everything runs just fine. Here's our electric actuator right here. We'll go ahead and choke it. And then turn the choke off. And we're good to go. That works out pretty slick. Guys, come on back, stick around. More to come. I appreciate you guys watching today's video. Don't forget to shoot straight, shoot often, and wear your personal flotation devices, and we'll see you on the next one.